Howdy, loyal subscribers. It is the Bird Dog here. I know you must be a loyal subscriber if you're watching this video. So, thank you so much for all of your support. I just wanted to take a moment before we jumped into this season finale of the Civil War Diaries. And first off, say thank you guys for all of the encouragement and support through the Civil War Diaries. This was a project to keep me occupied while my dog was going through surgery. And it's kind of evolved into a much bigger project that I really have enjoyed doing. And I appreciate you guys allowing me to do this and being here for the ride. So thank you guys so very much for that. I also wanted to take a moment and put today's video into context and point out a few key moments in today's video for you. And it might explain why I did this video. So this month is Black History Month. And of course, the Civil War was a very significant moment in black history. And I wanted to find a way to emphasize that in some way. Um, so I started putting this video together and I was talking to a viewer about it and telling them about the video. And they said to me that nobody wants to hear that history. Like uh, nobody wants to hear about that type thing. And that's the type of history which to me could possibly be the most important type of history to preserve is the type of history that some people just kind of want to sweep under the rug because it makes them uncomfortable. And that, I think, is the crux of this video. So this video is an interview with a former slave. His name is Uncle Billy McRae, and it was conducted in Jasper, Texas in 1940 by an ethnomusicologist named Alan Lomax. Now, Lomax was traveling around the country and interviewing former slaves to learn about the music of the times of slavery. And so he was collecting songs and having them sing songs that were sung in the fields and that sort of thing. And much of the interview that was conducted with Uncle Billy consists of that. Now we're only going to be listening to some excerpts of the interview that I feel are relevant and kind of lead us to the crux of this interview. And as the interview picks up where we're going to start in, we're just getting some general questions about Uncle Billy and his life, and Lomax's curiosity gets the better of him, I think, because he asks about the Civil War and about Uncle Billy's interactions with any troops from the Civil War. And as Uncle Billy begins to tell about the Civil War, he starts to stray into some territory that makes Lomax uncomfortable. And it becomes painfully apparent in the last 20 or 30 seconds of this interview that Lomax is very uncomfortable with the direction that Uncle Billy is taking him. And he very abruptly ends the interview by saying, that'll be enough. That'll be enough. And I think that the most important aspect of this video is that last 30 or 40 seconds of the interview. And I possibly could have reduced it to just that. But I wanted you guys to have some context and spend some time with Uncle Billy and see what he was like. So, if you've made it this far, thank you so very much again for coming along on the Civil War Diaries. You are a true and loyal friend, and I appreciate you so very much for that. And I hope that you have enjoyed the series. I hope to return in the fall to this. I've taken a, a position recently as a video editor, so I've been a lot more busy here around the house, and I uh, just kind of need to free up a little time. So we're wrapping this up, 22 episodes of the Civil War Diaries. I hope you guys have enjoyed them, 22 weeks of uh, sitting and cranking these out. I've certainly enjoyed it. So thank you guys. That's the editor's note. And with that, let's uh, jump into this week's episode of the Civil War Diaries.
How old are you, Uncle Billy? Well, I... Sit over a little bit. Right. I'll tell you my age. Now, I don't exactly know my age, but I can tell you what I go for. The 15th of this of October, I'll be 89. 89 years old. And on the second hand, the way they've got my age picture, I, on the 15th, I will be 117 years old. But I register in the courthouse of my age, be 98, uh, eight, no, 89, just coming to the 15th of this month, next of October. How many children have you, Uncle? How many children? I have. Right. How many children? Let's see. 36. 36? Yes, sir. How many boys? How many boys? 18 boys. And how many girls? I don't know. Can you like to tell this? How many girls? But the boys, I got 16 way right here in Jasper County. Tell you about them. Well, you said you they all can't go and tell me about them coming through here with cannons. Yes, yeah, yes. Now I'll tell you slavery. Way back in slavery time, I was stand at that's when the, the niggas were free. I we all got every day back in town to see the Yankees all going back home. I can really disagree that this half this have a uh, Six and, and eight mules to a cannon going through, and boats on them uh, cannon, cannon, then they put the wagon and have boats all on them wagon. Now, all, welcome to the mule, welcome to the mule, and one man a riding, riding the tongue mule. We all just sitting in the gap. I'm saying, all day long I'll be caught, and I'll be just well, and all the Yankees I'll be like with blue, with dressed in blue clothes. I can remember, we Blue jumped right in here and had a little pillow on the coat right there. The back line and courses up here. You yeah. I read it just as well. Did you come around? And it black mule have uh, maybe oh I don't know how many black horses. Then they come along there with a lot of these old gray mules on it. Just to them cannon, cannon. And then they come back with horses, saw horses. All his stuff, all going through town. That way for two days, they were going out through town for two days. And I remember, and the Yankees stopped here, and the Yankees stopped right on the corner. I was crying. I was a good size boy then. And what they call Freedom Bureau, you hear tell that, ain't you? And they prosecuting people, you know, what to do, you know, and all like that. And I regret how these problems. I've seen two men that had that were punishing. Well, what they do, and I seem to take them. That I, I, I had a little big tent. We we go to go and see them, and they take them, hang them up with a slum, and just let the tip at that time we hang out so many men, then let him down. That's the punishment they got. I would get the old man that they haven't come an old Deb uh, Shay. His name is Yankee White, and the man the judge's name. I forgot his name. But then I know he like Yankee White. And that's what he used to do in the But then they come, and my old master, old Colonel McCray, he bought one, two of the horses from him. I rode the horse many times. One old big horse they called Yankee Tom, big sorrel horse. And another big old horse was a saddle horse old Colonel McCray bought, and he was called Boston. He was a good big black horse. I used to go on, he took them all down to a farm, and I used to go all of that. I was a good big boy then. Yeah, good big boy. And the Yankees had come, and after a while, there'd be a whole troop of men come. They said they were Yankees, all walking, all walking. That crew of Yankees would go through. Next time you see, there'd come a whole troop of Yankees, all riding horses, big Guns hanging on there, and all like that, you know. That. We all just stand looking at them, all going home. And I said, I asked him, I said, 
I said to myself, Mama, what are, where are they going? He said, they're all going home now. And old Colonel Creed, that old master, he was looking at it. He said, well, hi, all of you niggas is all free now. Yankees are all going home. I remember that just as well. Right, right in town, so where we live now, right about the new, the new uh, post office. That's my old, old master's home, that's uh, 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 up above the old post office. Well, that is his square. From that post office, came down to the Citizen Bank. All oh, that is his whole square down. And came over to the other part, come out on up to the Methodist Church. That's my old master's stage. I can remember he was a speculator. I can remember that good big boy then. He had a big old shed down. And, and he had cotton all in that shed. And we boys all got play on that shed every day. And he had a he had wagon ever every day he'd load up all them wagons and take all that cotton and go. Oh. Now you see, that that was in slavery time. Now we got this as well and he'd bring back a whole lot of colored people. Well come across they said he was a speculator. And he sell them to all these people around this country. There's a lot of old people all dead now, what he brought them to. They all go off and bring them in. Oh, you look all of that my old my old my old papa was his wagoner. I used to go, he used to carry me with him all the time. He used to haul cotton, tear cotton from Jasper to wide his blood. And, and cotton to wide his and they'd carry cotton over here to uh, work there at a place they call, uh, I forgot the place now, carry cotton anyway. I remember he used to, he used to all the words, I was a good big boy tonight. And he had an auction, had a old, had an auction, had an old auction named Brandy. That's how come he used his wagon up. He'd get tired and sit down, Bill, oh, yes sir, get on up, get this whip, get on it. And I'd ride old Brandy. Ride old Brandy and drive the rest of them. Ride him, so I'd get tired and get down and walk side on that. I'd be like, oh, nigga, I've been to a heap. <laughs> All that stuff, that, that didn't stay with that. That old stay with that. Was. And I remember, I didn't take some more about stay with time. Right down, I can't tell you that's how it came. Right down close to Mr. Uh, Lincoln May's place, there was no jailhouse on. Old log jailhouse. Old log jailhouse was on. That, that's only, that's all I was going to, that's, that's where, and there was no, was no court, there was no, old, some kind of old courthouse, I reject it, and you used to put prisoners in that jailhouse. And me, me, and another young white fellow was raised named Cole McCree and Henry Munn. And we used to go home, the people that want some tea, we used to go home and steal bread and stuff and poke a them little bars to the prisoners. We used to go That's right, Henry Jackson. And there's no log jailhouse. Yeah. And all around now, we're, we're free. And I recollect like one time we all was looking at it, and they, and they brought in, they had hounds. And they brought them hound in and brought three niggas. With them hound runaway niggas, you know, cutting wood. And they, right, right across, right the creek there, they take them niggas and put them on, and put them on a log laying down the pavement. And hook them. You hear them niggas hollering and praying on that log. And that was the men to bring them in. Then they take them out down and put them in jail. I'll be my good Now, I've seen all of that out of, oh, that's, If you enjoyed today's video and would like to see more content like this, be sure to take a shot at the like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest bird dog content. And if you'd like to support the channel, for a limited time there's exclusive Civil War Diaries merchandise available in the video link below.